What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero have bringing you another video here on the Modern Ninja channel. Actually, I'm gonna be bringing you a whole new series here on this channel starting now. Uh, I'm not sure how often it will be, it'll probably be every other week or so, but uh, this is gonna be the series called What is Martial Arts? Basically, it breaks down one fighting style, one type of martial arts for you guys because if you don't know, there are literally hundreds of styles out there and it can be hard to keep track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down the history of that style and explain what that style is at its core. That way, for those of you that don't you know, necessarily know a lot about martial arts, you can start to learn and figure out what type of style you want to practice in the future. With all that said, we are going with what I think is the best martial art out there. I might be a little bit biased, but Chuck Norris gave me a thumbs up, so it's okay. Tong Sudo Mudokwan, or Tong Sudo for short. I'm just gonna let you guys know ahead of time. Uh, I suck at pronunciation. I can barely speak English, so a lot of these pronunciations I'm going to completely butcher, but don't worry, for those of you that really wanna know how to pronounce it, I will leave the names somewhere on the bottom of the screen for you guys. You're welcome. Tong Sudo is a Korean martial art that incorporates fighting principles from Subak, an ancient martial art that uses bare hands, Shotokan Karate, Kung Fu, and Taekyung, characterized by its fluid and dynamic foot movement. The name Tong Sudo is actually a Korean pronunciation of the Chinese Haji right here. I, I, I don't even know where to go with that. Which translates literally to the way of the Tang Han. Tang referring to the Tang Dynasty. There were several different schools of Tang Sudo. Chang Du Quan, Sung Mu Quan, Chang Mu Quan, and Ji Du Quan. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, I'll leave the words underneath the screen. But we will be focusing on my style of choice, Mudokwan, for this video, created by Grandmaster Huang Gi. During the late 1930s, Huang Gi mastered the Korean martial arts Subak and Taekwondo. He then decided to enter China due to the Japanese occupation of Korea and spent 20 years there studying northern style Yang Kung Fu. However, after World War II, Huang Yi returned to Korea with that knowledge. Between 1944 and the liberation of Korea in 1945, the five different schools and their head teachers became known as the foundation of Tong Si Do, with four other offshoots being formed shortly after the Korean War. Those other four were known as the second generation of Tong Si Do, and we're not gonna be covering those quite today. You may think it sounds very similar to the ever popular Taekwondo, and my friend, On September 16th, 1961, the most most of the different schools agreed to unify under the name Korea Tang Te Su Do. Eh, can't pronounce that. The Korea Te Su Do Association, a name that was changed to the Korea Taekwondo Association four years later. Despite this unification forced onto the different schools by the government. The schools and the teachers did teach their own separate arts in secret and taught Taekwondo lessons in public. This makes Taekwondo the newest incarnation of the Tang Soo Do family, and in many aspects, farthest removed from the original Tang Soo Do. This is a very traditional style that focuses on being defensive yet effective. Practitioners use their hips to generate power that they put behind every technique, every punch, and every kick. The many hyungs, or forms, of this art form around several different themes. Three of the most common ones are the kicho hyungs, which are forming the basic patterns taught to generally beginners of the art. The piangan hyungs, using the medium to short length forms utilizing characteristics of a snapping turtle, slow, steady, and very powerful. And basai using the characteristics of snake, methodical, smooth, with very quick and sharp strikes. One step sparring is also a large part of the art. This is a pattern of defensive moves against a single or sometimes multiple attacks performed in generally pairs. This art sticks to its defensive roots and allows practitioners 
to react effectively to attacks as opposed to going on the complete offense. Free sparring is often used in competition as well as allowing practitioners to practice active combat without the intention of permanent harm to the opponent. No broken legs. That is a gruesome looking injury to Kevin. However, many practitioners feel that contact is important and essential to understanding the proper technique necessary for developing mental preparedness and a level of relaxation in critical and stressful situations. Major injuries are at all times avoided to the best of their ability, but scrapes and bruises are just part of the situation, part of the part of the learning experience. As you know and can probably tell by now, this is my favorite and preferred style of martial art, but other notable practitioners would be Chuck Norris, Steve McQueen, and my personal favorite, Michael J. White. Michael J. White is like my favorite martial arts actor person. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I love researching uh, the history of these styles and actually these videos are taking me a while to come up with. So uh, hopefully I can get them out in time for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. And I want you to let me know what other styles you want me to cover down in the description. I know I have some in my head that I really wanna cover, but I wanna know what you want me to cover. I gotta be honest, it's getting really cold, so I'm gonna make this quick. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out.